Hello everyone. So, in today's video we're going to continue the uh, headphone amplifier project. But this time we're going to be looking at the power supply of the circuit. First of all, I'm just going to do a, a bit of an overview of the topologies that we can use to uh, power the circuit in any other audio circuit or any circuit at all that you have. Um, then instead of going to the power transformer selection and the unregulated supply design, I'm going to leave this for later. Okay, so because uh, I, I I did this 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 order, but uh, actually usually what you do is you first design your regulator and then you design the unregulated supply and selected transformer based on the limitations and the specifications of the regulator design that you've chosen, okay? So for this uh, project, we are going to be using the shunt regulator, just because, hey, we are doing class A, let's just warrant all the power. Not just that, but a shunt regulator has a um, much better noise characteristics and um, ripple rejection, so that's a lot better for us because since our design, our final design, uh, doesn't have a, a very good power supply rejection ratio, then anything that we can get uh, out of a of ripple out of the supply rail, the better. So in this case, we're just going to go with a shunt design, and we are just going to take a look at the the different topologies for shunt regulators, and uh, in the end, we're going to have a a finished supply. For this video, we're only going to be talking about an overview of the topologies, and we're going to be talking about a, a bit about uh, the uh, shunt regulator. Okay, we're not going to get the final circuit in this video because I'm planning to do um, a next video going through some uh, voltage references selection which might be a, a bit interesting so I could add a, a, another topic here of a voltage reference selection and then in the third video we're actually going to be looking at the final regulator design All right uh, by the way uh, you may be hearing some background noise we are having um, a bit of a uh, <laughs> Of a, a, a windstorm here in Portugal, so um, please forgive me for, for all the noises in the background, okay? So um, let's jump right in. Let's do some overview of the topologies available, all right? Now let's look at some of the linear voltage regulator topologies that we have available, okay? We're not going to be talking about uh, switch mode topologies, that's because um, this is an audio circuit. Uh, Contrary to popular belief, um, switching supplies can be and are used um, these days a lot in audio design. Um, all you have to do to use a, a switch mode supply is you need to keep the switching voltage um, higher than the usual audio range to uh, minimize the interference and also just route all the cables away from the supply and so that but routing cables away from the supply you already do when you're doing audio even if it's a linear supply because the transformer induces a whole bunch of um, crap in the signal. So uh, don't don't just dismiss switching supplies as horrible because most likely you're uh, um, listening to this video using an amplifier that's powered from one. So that's not an issue, okay? But um, since this is, gonna, is a video about uh, minimalism and um, uh, learning more about a uh, um, the transistors and using discrete circuitry, I think it's fitting to use a linear supply as an example, okay? Now, so we are going to be designing a linear supply. There are two major kinds of uh, linear supplies. You have your um, series pass, which is your uh, regular uh, supply as in uh, an LM317, a 78, uh, 05, 7812, and stuff like that, which is pretty simple. Basically, you have your supply right here, and then you feed it into some sort of uh, current regulator. Um, linear supplies, uh, they are always um, um, dealing with current, even switch mode supplies, every supply, it's not regulating the voltage, it's regulating the current, which in turn regulates the voltage, okay? So you always have to keep that in mind. Um, so you have some sort of a controlled voltage source, 
controlled current source. This is not a constant current source. It's a controlled current source, which then feeds your load, okay, your load, okay, which is a current sink. So basically, what a series type of supply does is very simple. It just controls this current so that, let's just draw something here. So I1 and this going to the load is I2, okay? So what the series regulator does, everything that this, it just wants to do this. So it wants to make I1 equals to I2 <laughs> so that the voltage across this load, it's always, it's always the same, okay? That's how it does it. It's basically just uh, trying to make sure that the current that's flowing through it is the same as, is the, same as the current that is uh, being synced by the load. That's, that's how they work. Your LM317, your 7812, all of them. Now, when you have a shunt supply, it's a little bit different. It, but by the way, in this case, you can see that the current that, uh, that's uh, uh, been drawn from your supply is always um, dependent on your load, okay? It's not drawing any excess current in this stage. Of course, it has some QS in current, but it's usually in the microamps. So <laughs> there's not much to, um, to uh, um uh, measure there. It's it's literally just a, a tiny bit of current to bias the transistors and stuff like that, right? Most of the current is going to load. Now, in a shunt supply, it's a bit different. You're going to be burning in a lot of current that's just wasted. So let's take a look. Okay, so you have your V plus here. That feeds into a constant current source, okay, so it's a controlled current source, that's why they uh, tried to draw an N here, and hey, it's horrible, <laughs> but you have a constant current source providing a fixed amount of current, let's say I1 again, then you have another constant current, but this time it's a constant current sink. So here it's source, and here's a constant current sink, okay? And this is drawing, let's say, I2, right? But then you tap it here in the midpoint, and that's where your load comes in, your R load, okay? And that has a current of I3 passing through it. So let me just write this down, shunt. Okay. So right off the bat, what's happening in here? In order to uh, maintain a voltage, here that's a uh, constant that's set by you. What it's trying to do is this keep I1 equal to I2 plus I3. It's pretty self explanatory. You can <laughs> clearly just see this by looking at it because if there is any imbalance between uh, these two currents and I1, uh, it's no longer in regulation. Okay. So how does it do this? It's very simple. If your current is draw, if your load is drawing, um, let's say this is like one amp, okay? This current source is set to one amp. If you want um, 100 milliamps to flow through your load, this current sink needs to sink the other 900 milliamps. So you get the sum of the two equals to the current source that's being sourced into your circuit. Okay, so what a shunt supply does is that it's always drawing the exact same amount of current. It's always drawing the same amount. If you have a transformer, if you have another linear supply going through the 
this a V plus rail here? It doesn't matter. You always be drawing the exact the exact same current. Doesn't matter if your load changes. If your load decides to draw more than um, the one milliamp, this is automatically current limited, just like a lab supply. Okay. In this case, if this load decided it wanted more, if this uh, controlled current source doesn't have any protection, it will just let it. It, that, that's usually what happens if you design your own uh, voltage regulator and forget to add uh, overcurrent or over temperature uh, limits to it. <laughs> it can draw whatever it wants, okay? whatever it, it's capable of, whatever this supply is capable of delivering. In this case, it's inherently uh, current limited. This load, it can, it can try to draw more than one amp. This will just shut off. Uh, in theory, this should shut off. In practice, you have some QS and current here that should always be flowing. It can't shut off, so the voltage that uh, that current that uh, flows through your load can't be your maximum of uh, your I1. But in theory, as we're dealing here, um, if this load tries to draw two amps, it just can't because it's limited right here by this circuit. So it's great in that sense because you have uh, built-in protection. Okay. The only problem is that it's just always drawing that amount of current. So you're wasting current all the time. Okay. And uh, where in this case, you're using the exact same amount of current that you need. Now, why do something like this? For high power stuff, like we're talking like one amp, this is just uh, absurd. You're just wasting a lot of power for nothing. This makes no sense for that sort of stuff, for high power. High power, this is what you do. You just do a series type of uh, supply, okay? But um, since this is a headphone amplifier, it's already in class, so it's already burning a lot of current. Uh, this doesn't hurt to just burn a little bit more all the time. Uh, and uh, since our design is very minimalist, uh, what happens is uh, that's that design that we've shown in the, the previous video in the series, it's very susceptible to uh, power supply uh, noise. So if your supply has any sort of ripple, that can be translated into some distortion and some um, uh, minor oscillations on the output of an amplifier. So we need to make sure that the uh, supply rails that go to that circuit are as stable and as um, uh, ripple-free as possible. You can't just plug in a, uh, an unregulated supply directly to that, it's not going to work, okay? It's just going to pass all of that ripple to your uh, output and it's just going to be a mess. So when you use a, um, a shunt supply, it's, it's very little, little it's very little, uh, sorry for that, susceptible to uh, uh, input ripple because of the, the fact that it's just a current source and a current sink and your load is just in parallel. So this already tries to make sure that almost no ripple gets here to the output, just by the design itself. Here in this case, you can get some ripple going through, again, inherited to the, inherited to the design. Okay. Also, there is um, very little noise here because everything is operating at a pretty high currents. Um, so you get a lot better um, noise response with something like this. So for a design like the one we have, which is very susceptible to a, a ripple and noise in the supply, something like this is absolutely perfect. We're already doing class A on the amplifier itself. <laughs> Let's do class A on the supply as well. Okay, so uh, now that we've discussed a bit of the uh, theory and the behind the scenes of how this stuff works, Let's take a look at an, uh, at designing and uh, some of the um, steps that you go along the way to learn how to design a very good um, shunt regulator, okay? Um, and I'm, I'm not going to be talking about the series regulator. If someone wants me to do some uh, in-depth explanation about this and actually design a discrete uh, regulator to be um, used with the headphone amplifier if someone wants a, uh, a series <laughs> don't, and doesn't want to build something that will waste a lot of current all the time. I can do that, just leave it in the comments as a suggestion. And uh, in the end, I can uh, throw something in there and uh, design something like this as well. Because everything that we will learn about this, we can apply to this. It's just, uh, you just mix the circuit a bit.
Okay, so uh, let's take a look at uh, how we can build this. So let's go through the steps of building a shunt regulator from the simplest kind to the uh, most advanced one that we can muster. Okay, first of all, the simplest form of a shunt regulator is his inner diode. Okay, so let's look into it. So we have our V plus, we go through a resistor which goes into our venerable Zener diode, okay? And here, you tap this off, and this goes to your output, okay? This is very simple. This is the simplest sort of regulator that you can build. First of all, I'm not going to be uh, this whole thing. I'm not going to be uh, uh, doing any decoupling, showing decoupling. Just keeping that in mind that uh, if you have an output like this, just put some capacitance here. You can calculate the the uh, amount of capacitance by getting the um, frequency of the ripple that you uh, expect to see here uh, in the supply and on your output. Okay, keep that in mind as well. And then you just uh, put a, uh, a capacitor here that has an RC time constant with this resistor right here so that it cancels out the frequency of your ripple. Okay, so I, I won't be drawing the capacitors just for simplicity's sake, but when you're doing this, always decouple your, your outputs, right? Now, this, again, is the same thing we did before. Okay, here, let me leave this in here. So you have a current source, in this case our current source flowing I1 is our resistor. This is not a good uh, constant current source because any uh, ripple here will uh, change the current flowing through it. Then we have our current sink passing I2 which is the Zener diode and then we have our load passing I3. Same thing as we had in here. The only the problems with this sort of topology, it's super simple. If you need a super just bare bones, ultra simple, um, low component count, ultra cheap sort of regulated, in this case it's really in quote, mar in quote marks, regulated supply, this is the way to do it. Uh, when you see those uh, horrible capacitive dropper circuits in uh, mains appliances uh, and you need a, a regulated voltage for uh, a microcontroller or something like that, this is usually the sort of regulator that's inside those store sorts of supplies, okay? Because this is, this is super cheap, okay? But the problem is, the Zener diode, it, it's, it's Zener voltage, the breakdown voltage of the diode is extremely dependent on two factors. Temperature, if your ambient temperature changes, also the temperature inside the, the diode, if it heats up, if you're uh, drawing a lot of current through it, because you have power diode, Zener diodes that support like one or two amps, uh, two amps, no, sorry, uh, one or two watts, so it's going to heat up inside. That's going to change. But also the current passing through it changes its Zener voltage. Which means that any ripple here will induce a different current through this uh, resistor, which will in turn induce a different current going through your Zener diode, which will change the voltage here at the output, because it changes the Zener voltage of your diode. Not only that, but when if you look at this, uh, um, diagram that we've discussed before, it's sharing this current source with your load. So if your load starts drawing any amount of current, any amount of current, seriously, it will change the current that goes through it, which means again the, the uh, current changes, so the Zener voltage changes, so everything here changes. This is, this is literally a mess, because as soon as you start drawing current, this thing will, will not uh, conduct in the same way that it was doing before, and this voltage will start to have ripple, the output. So yeah, it is cheap, it works, especially if you put a lot of capacitance here, 
but it's it's very horrible. It's it's literally like the the worst type of regulated supply that you can get. It's literally this. Okay. So, uh, just so that we uh, have an, uh, a finished example, let's do some uh, calculations here. Um, to discover your, uh, the resistor that you have to put here, you have to know the current that's passing through your load. Whenever you're designing a shunt regulator, you always need to uh, know the maximum, the maximum current that will be flowing through your load to design it. So, for simplicity's sake, uh, let's go with uh, a load of uh, 10 milliamps. Okay, it's a very um, reasonable load. Let's go with that. So 10 milliamps. Um, I don't know if you can see the calculator. Well, okay, here we go. Here you can see I've uh, increased the font size of the calculator. So that's easier for you to see. So I don't have to do the whole, like, putting the calculator up here and refocusing. <laughs> so let's say our load is, our I3 is um, 10 milliamps. We need a... Uh, to have a little bit of margin in here. So let's say um, 15 milliamps flowing through this resistor. So this constant current source, which is not very constant, um, will be drawing, will be uh, sourcing um, 15 milliamps, right? Let's say that uh, the output here that we want, we want it at uh, 12 volts. So let's say it's a 12 volt center. Remember that if you look at the data, data sheet of any sort of a Zener diode, you have a, uh, a voltage curve for the Zener diode that is dependent on the current passing through it. There you're going to see how horrible these things are at actually regulating. So let's just design it like this uh, as an ideal Zener diode that will clamp the voltage no matter what at 12 volts. So, and let's say that our V plus is at 15 volts. Okay. Let me just. Uh, write this stuff now then we use it for all the other calculators so if V plus is at 15 volts in our V out is 12 volts and our I load is uh, 10 milliamps okay let's design this now, all that we are going to be using here is just Ohm's Law. It's very simple stuff. Shunt regulators are, are basically just, uh, everything is just Ohm's Law, okay? So, if we want 12 volts here at the output, let me write this stuff down. So, 12 volts here, and we have 15 volts here. First thing that you got to do is just realize one thing. You want also... Let me just write this 15 milliamps flowing through this resistor. So you need a volt drop of uh, 3 volts. So you have 3 volts across this resistor passing a current of 15 milliamps. That's very simple, just so that you understand. So it's 15 minus 12. Okay, so 15 minus 12, the current, the voltage across the resistor, divided by the 15 milliamps in Ohm's law. So 15 milliamps. And if you divide, that gives us a resistor of 200 ohms so in an ideal world if you had a 200 ohm resistor here a zener diode and your low drawing whatever with a maximum of um, 10 milliamps it could be drawing 1 milliamp 2 5 up to 10 milliamps this would work just perfect and your zener diode would be dissipating if there was no load if it was just open uh, 15 milliamps through it and we can also calculate it's a uh, power dissipation so sorry for not uh, <laughs> propping the calculator because the, the lighting above the pitch I need to fix this and make something that doesn't glare everything um, so um, this Zener diode it has 12 volts across it that's how you calculate power you just see um, what the voltage is across it and multiply by the current so if it was at open circuit which is when it's drawing the most the maximum amount of current through it so it will be 12 volts um, times the 15 milliamps. So this center diode would be dissipating 180 milliwatts. 
Okay. Whenever you design a shunt supply, you should always design for a worst case scenario that your output is open. If the output was shorted, this would have zero a milliamps, zero amps flowing through it, and everything would be flowing through the resistor and to the load. Okay. But in this case, you always need to make sure that even if you know that your circuit will always be there in the output, you shouldn't just um, take that as a given. Okay. Always think that this should be able to operate with an open output. Okay. So in this case, any Zener diode would easily be able to um, withstand this with the only problem that as soon as you start passing that amount of current through it, it's going to heat up, its Zener voltage will change and all that. So now let's take a look at what we can do to mitigate this a tiny little bit. The not the temperature stuff, but at least so that we can um, reduce the voltage, the not the voltage, sorry, the current uh, differences that uh, since it's sharing the current. Let's see how we can uh, reduce that uh, that uh, load imbalance every time that makes its inner voltage change due to the lack of current flowing through it. So all that we've done here was just to have a uh, simple like Zener regulator. Now we're going to be looking at a buffered Zener regulator. The way to do that, it's pretty simple. Okay. Again, I'm going to be doing shunt regulators with a pass transistor regulator. It's a bit different. You're a bit different. You just move the, the transistor. I can show you that when you get to it. So you have again your V plus. That is going through a resistor, just like we had before. Then that goes again through your uh, Zener diode. Okay. But this time, what you have is a resistor here. Going to ground. Then you tap off this point, you put a nice NPN transistor here, going to ground, which will be driving this node right here, which is actually your output. Okay. So how does this work? This is a um, buffered Zener. Okay. Now, I, I won't be drawing. Okay, no, I will. So, so that we have some reference. We have the I1, same as we did here. Then um, we will have, let's say, our I2. Instead of going through the Zener, we'll put I2 here because our I2 is going to be this part of the circuit. Um, in reality, your I2 is the current flowing through this transistor, this shortened transistor, and the current going through this uh, Zener uh, right here. But uh, Let's not uh, go into the specifics. And again, you have your I3, which is going to be our load of, again, 10 milliamps. Okay. So what are we doing in here? So first of all, one thing that will change. This node right here needs to be at VB as we've uh, discussed in great lengths in the um, previous videos in the headphone amplifier series. This node should be at VB. So for simplicity's sake, let's say it's at 0 0.6. Okay. Because this transistor, as soon as voltage as a uh, current such flowing through here, and it breaks down the, the Zener, um, and voltage appears here, it will rise as soon as it reaches that VB 
um, of a, around 0.65 volts, this transistor will start to turn on and it will clamp the, the voltage at this point, maintaining that 0.6 volts uh, right here. So again, 12 volts here, and we have our 15 volts here. All right. First of all, this node right here, uh, something that I uh, did wrong. This won't be at 12 volts. This will be at 12.6 volts. I forgot because this center, let's say it's a, an ideal 12 volt center. Um, it's not across um, the, this point and the ground. It will break down as soon as 12 volts is across it. But in the other side, you have a 0 0.6 volts. So this node right here will always be at 12.6 um, volts because of the VB of the transistor here. Um, you could have any voltage here. If, if you put, for example, an LED here you of uh, 1.8 um, volts, forget this, uh, this uh, transistor here. Let's look at this circuit. If you have another uh, uh, diode, for example, you could just put a, a normally biased diode here, here and you would get uh, 12.6 volts here. That's also something that you can do with zeners. You can cascade them. You can put two zeners in series. That will give you um, uh, a summing of the zener voltages. If you put them in parallel, you get uh, more current handling. So just keep that in mind. Now, um, here in the circuit, it's going to be on 12.6 at this node and 0 0.6 here. So first thing we are going to do um, is bias this, uh, this um, zener so that it has a constant current flowing through it. And how can we do that? It's extremely simple. This node will always be at the VB, of course. VB changes with um, current flowing through the transistor and also with temperature. But in this case, um, even though the current is going to be changing through it because it will be sharing it with the load, the VB doesn't change drastically with current as much as a uh, Zener diode. So we are safe there. We get some. Uh, some benefits already. And uh, this is basically constant current sync because you know that you have a 0 0.6 volts across it all the time. So then you just calculate this uh, resistor right here so that you get uh, the desired voltage across the desired current across your Zener diode according to the data sheet to get a, a constant uh, Zener voltage across it. So let's grab the calculator. And let's say we want to, uh, you go to the data sheet and you see that uh, for exactly 12 volts of a Zener voltage, you need one milliamp flowing through it, okay? So it's very simple. You have a 0 0.6 volts across a resistor. You want one milliamp flowing through it. So it is uh, 0 0.6 volts divided by your one milliamp. And what you get is a 600 ohm resistor. So let's put that value here. So you have a 600 ohm resistor here. So you have one milliamp flowing through here. Also, you got to make sure if this was like a power circuit and here was a power transistor, you would have to uh, put enough current flowing through this phase, this uh, stage, to also provide uh, enough current to go through the base of this transistor. So you also have to keep that in mind. Oh, you can always use just a Darlington pair and then this voltage would be at 1.2 volts with the Darlington pair, but then you just don't have to uh, think about that current flowing through here because that will also change the current flowing through your uh, zener and all that. Okay, so just, okay, just a little tidbit. Uh, so now we have 1 milliamp flowing through here. We have uh, 15 milliamps flowing through here. Now our load could be uh, another circuit right here, or our load could literally be just this transistor right here, which is what's going to do. As soon as 0 0.6 volts appears here and 1 milliamp is flowing through it, this thing will start to clamp. So it will get all the excess current, in this case 14 milliamps, flowing through it. Very simple, and that will uh, ensure that 12.6 uh, volts stays here. If you put the load of 10 milliamps right here, this will um, uh, conduct only 4 milliamps and the other 10 will go to your load. This is very simple. With uh, a design like this, you have a much more stable um, Zener diode. 
because again the current through it will just change a, a very tiny amount okay because the only the only way that it's going to change is when this uh, conduction of the VB changes its voltage then this voltage will vary a bit uh, but hey it's it's negligible compared to how horrible it uh, the a circuit like this is okay so that's one way to uh, mitigate this and it works fairly well you can also draw a lot more current than uh, you could with a, a simple zener diode like this because what's actually dissipating this current is your um, transistor or shunt transistor and not the zener okay so this is a lot more stable but it's uh, still not quite there so let's uh, take a look at uh, another circuit that can uh, stabilize this even further now to stabilize this even further what we can do is start by uh, changing this resistor right here because this resistor as soon as uh, you get any ripple here the current through it is actually going to change so you don't have a uh, fixed um, amount of current flowing through it so this transistor and also like this inner will always be fighting um, this uh, changing uh, current and trying to compensate that to keep this uh, voltage um, the same according to your reference okay. so one way to mitigate that is very simple is to use an actual constant current source which we've seen in a previous video so i'm just going to draw it right here i'm going to do a a little bit of a time lapse so that this thing uh, <laughs> can be a, a bit faster because i i will just draw i take a long time to draw okay so see you in a bit <laughs> We have here it's the exact same circuit um, that we have in this side and just write this so this is a uh, buffered center with a constant current source so the main difference you we have just substituted this resistor right here with a current source this way we can ensure that the current i1 that we had here and here never changes no matter what sort of ripple you get here in your supply rail your unregulated supply rail you always get the exact same amount of current flowing through here which means it's going to be sourcing the exact same amount of current which means it won't be fighting all the time to uh, compensate for this ch these changes in current okay so you have the same thing so you have i2 here and your i3 flowing there to your output very simple again if you want to know more about this sort of circuit okay, just check out the uh, current sources in sync's um, video there you'll have all the, the uh, knowledge that you could get from uh, this kind of circuit all right so again in order to calculate what we've did what we did before so we want um 15 milliamps flowing through here let me just uh, write this down a bit so 15 milliamps uh, this will be at uh, 12.6 this node will be at 6 volts again let's just say that we have uh, our 1 milliamp flowing through here the same thing here so 1 milliamp this will be the same 600 for our 1 milliamp because of the VB now here same thing we have one VB drop here now if we want um, if we want six um, 15 milliamps flowing through here it's very simple we don't need the 
the the supply rail we just have the vbe so let's assume 0 0.6 volts across this resistor 15 milliamps flowing through it so 15 milliamps divided so we need a 40 ohm resistor here so if we put a 40 ohm resistor here we get 50 milliamps let's just say that this is 10k just for a as a very uh, common value to put in here. This will be um, pulling in around, what are they, 10K? Probably like around one to two milliamps. But uh, this won't affect anything else here. So what we have here, our 50 milliamps have one milliamp flowing through here. So it's robbing us of one milliamp. So we only get a maximum of uh, 14 milliamps at our output. Uh, this transistor, same thing as before, it's buffering the center diode and it is taking all of the hit of uh, uh, dissipating all the current. So with this as an open circuit, you will have uh, 14 milliamps flowing through it, which, uh, by the way, let's just, uh, for good measure, let's calculate its uh, dissipation. So you have a... 12.6 volts here, zero here, so 12.6 volts across it. And we have uh, 14, in this case, 14 milliamps flowing through it. So in worst case, so times, you get a bit less than a, um, 200 uh, milliwatts, which is uh, trivial. You could even put a, a TO92 package transistor here for this uh, sort of stuff. So yeah, this is very simple. It's the exact same thing we had with the buffered zener, but this is a lot more stable and it has less output ripple since uh, the current that's being fed through this stage isn't changing with any ripples in your unregulated supply rail as we had here. This is a much more stable circuit, a much better design. Okay. Um, in the final circuit that we are going to be looking in the in two episodes, uh, we'll be doing something like this. The only difference is we're going to be designing this in a way that it has negative feedback, so that you can adjust the output just like a um, any uh, voltage regulator, like a um, LM three one seven, let's say, uh, which is a huge plus. First of all, we had negative feedback, which is going to uh, reduce even further the ripple here because we'll have uh, some kind of uh, amplification, not amplification, sorry, some sort of a uh, gain, an open loop gain. Um, and not only that, but with that comes um, the, the ability to actually uh, change the voltage here. So we're not bound to the Zener voltage of this plus the VBE here which is great. This is great for a fixed type of regulator. You could, if you wanted 12.6 volts out, this is just perfect. You get a zener that uh, at the current that you've set here with this resistor has your uh, desired voltage. And then you can just calculate the voltage output here. And let's say you wanted 12.6 volts out. This is just perfect. You could just put this on a, on a piece of a proto board and just use it as it is should be great but most of the time you don't want to to be a uh, um, hostage to the the variations in zener voltage because even though the data sheet says has those nice graphs showing all that there is a lot of margin in that and if you test a, a whole bunch let's say like a uh, hundred zener uh, diodes they will all have a little bit of a discrepancies in their zener voltage given the same amount of current so uh, if, if the voltage output, the voltage, the set voltage is not critical, you could just roll with this. This is perfectly acceptable. But I want to have some, uh, some flexibility. So in the final circuit, this is going to be a, a little bit different. But uh, uh, I'm going to just put a, a little um, addendum to this video. And I'm just going to talk about a, a little something that will be uh, discussed in the next video which is uh, this Zener, the Zener diode right here. Uh, this can be substituted by a, a, any sort of reference. So let's just look at that as a, a preview of what we'll be doing in the next video, okay?
Now we have shown all these examples here with a Zener diode, but you could substitute this Zener diode by any sort of voltage reference. So let's take a look at that. Now a voltage reference, when you see voltage reference, usually you'll think about um, any sort of um, um, uh, ICs, it's usually ICs, you think about uh, those um, uh, TL431s and um, it's not, that's a shunt regulator by the way, uh, not a voltage reference, but it's usually used as a voltage reference. Um, you have a bunch of, uh, of ICs that are used like that. Um, but in this case, a voltage reference can be literally any sort of voltage that you're going to be used as a reference for your regulator. In this case, we've used a Zener diode. That's, that can be one reference. This is a, a very poor reference, but it is a reference nonetheless. Okay, your Zener diode, humble Zener diode. You can also use as a reference, a regular diode, okay, just a diode. That's also a reference. In this case, I'm drawing them here the exact same way that you, the polarity that you'll be putting then substituting them here in the circuit. So if you wanted to have a diode here, you could just put a diode here. And then in this case, you would have a 1.2 volt here at the output, <laughs> which is a if that's what you need, that's what you need, but uh, that's a bit low, but it can be used with uh, some negative feedback in the circuit we are going to be uh, discussing in the next two videos to amplify that. So that's a perfectly valid reference. Um, something else that I've usually used in the past, it's uh, my go-to sort of uh, reference for any uh, voltage regulator, even a, a series pass voltage regulators. Is an LED. It's it's it has a very stable um, breakdown voltage. Very very stable. So you have a a regular LED. I usually use those um, red LEDs, the old style that are used for uh, signaling. They are usually at around a one point eight volts. It's a very precise uh, reference most of the time. They are low noise. They have a a whole bunch of, uh, of nice things. They are very well thermally insulated, so uh, differences in ambient temperature uh, don't affect them so much as if it was just a regular diode or a zener. So they're pretty good in, in that respect, and I've used them before. Uh, another thing that you could use is um, something, you could use an IC, um, voltage reference, or a TL431, uh, which is a shunt regulator, but if you're going to be using a TL431, hey, you don't need to do any of this, just uh, go to the data sheet, uh, there you see uh, a buffered uh, example that you can pull loads of current through from it, but hey, we're not doing that, we're doing everything discrete, because you want to learn, you want to learn what's inside, for example, the TL431. So uh, another thing you could, that you could use, hey, just a humble resistor. A resistor is a is a sort of a voltage reference. It's a very uh, crappy voltage reference, but it is one because if you can be sure that you are going to be maintaining um, uh, a fixed amount of current flowing through it, if you substitute this by a um, resistor, you could change the value of the transistor, the resistor. So that uh, a voltage differential would uh, appear across it. For example, let's say uh, if you wanted to have a uh, 0.6 volts here, hey, just put another 600 ohm here. If you wanted, um, uh, for example, uh, 1.2 volts across it to get a uh, 1.8 volt supply, hey, just get, get a uh, precision uh, 120, um, uh, not 120, sorry, 1.2K resistor, hey, you have a 1.2 volts across it for if uh, one milliamp is flowing through it. Okay, so hey, <laughs> uh, you can use a resistor as a voltage reference. It's not advisable, but it is a sort of voltage reference. Uh, one thing that you could also use is a uh, bootstrap, a bootstrapped resistor where you uh, get a uh, capacitor across it, and then you have basically a constant current source. 
So that's another thing that you could use. But uh, these are just some examples. Um, anything that drops a fixed amount of voltage, given a, uh, a fixed amount of current can be used. You could even use, for example, let's just draw something here. Hey, you could use an incandescent lamp. That's, that's another sort of a voltage preference. Again, a pretty crappy one, but it is one, and it's very thermally stable <laughs> in that regard, hey? <laughs> it's going to get hot, and it's just going to stay that way, no matter how cold or, uh, um, or hot your environment is. Hey, it's going to get hot, and it'll be very thermally stable, at least. But, um, yeah, so these are just some sorts of voltage references. Anything that drops a fixed amount of voltage across it, you can just place it in here, no problems whatsoever. You could even use, hey, for example, you could use a transistor. Just thought of another one. How could I have forgotten about this? You could use a transistor. A transistor. Uh, all that you do, uh, all that you got to do is just do this. And uh, by tying your um, the base to the collector. What you get is a, let me just write this, a transistor. Oh, that's horrible. Hey, transistor. Um, the way that it's the, that's uh, set up right here, this is basically just a uh, the equivalent of a uh, diode like this with the VBE. This is a bit more stable than just putting the diode. So, hey, that's another uh, option. Uh, and uh, in the next video, what I'm actually going to be doing is revisiting exactly this, but we're going to be doing some experiments, because that's something that I've never done before. I just used usually an LED, because I basically read online from multiple sources, what, six years ago, that LEDs made a great voltage references instead of Zener diodes, and then I've been using them ever since. <laughs> uh, it's just one of those things, and I, and I never thought to, uh, to experiment this sort of stuff so since we're going to be designing a uh, a shunt regulator i was like hey this is going to be a good time to to share this with you all and have a uh, uh something published that uh, other people can reference and, and look at it so that's going to be very interesting so in the next video what we're going to be talking about we're going to be uh, selecting some of these uh these uh, volta references uh, it's pretty late right now right now it's a uh, uh 20 uh, 35 so um 8 35 p.m. here in Portugal. Uh, I, I can't order anything right now, and I really want to do this video uh, tomorrow, at least record it. <laughs> it will probably take me a whole day, and uh, I'll have to edit, so it won't be posted to YouTube uh, in two days. But uh, hey, I'll, I need to get some uh, Zener diodes, because I have zero Zener diodes here. I have a bunch of LEDs, some diodes. Uh, resistors, I of course, I got a lot. Lamps, I don't have any lamps. I'm not going to do any lamps. Uh, but I have some transistors as well. So what we're going to be building, I'm going to be building a, a whole bunch of uh, circuits on a proto board so that noise is not a, a problem like with a, with a breadboard. We are going to be checking um, the stability of the, the Zener diode, a diode, an LED, and a transistor to see which one is the best to use as a reference in our circuit. I'm going to be uh, changing the current flowing through them, so we're going to be seeing how their uh, their uh, drop voltage, the, the the voltage across them changes regarding uh, the the current that's flowing through them. We are going to be uh, testing them thermally just a bit because I don't have uh, any sort of um, uh, stuff here to actually uh, uh, put it in a thermal chamber. I don't have that sort of uh, equipment. So we're just going to be uh, heating them up with a uh, hot air gun and just cooling them a bit with uh, some uh, uh, canned air. I don't have the canned air, so I, I'll need to, uh, <laughs> to get that tomorrow as well. So uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to be a very interesting video. It's going to be all experimental, so yeah, it's going to be very interesting. <laughs> so I'm going to leave this here. So today we learned a lot. We learned how to design a uh, simple shunt regulator. Next episode, we're going to be do some, doing some experiments. And uh, in the next episode, uh, after the, this next one, we're going to be uh, actually showing the final uh, 
uh, regulator circuit. It's, it's going to be very interesting. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have any questions about this stuff that we've talked, please leave them in the comments below. If you've got any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below as well. I love suggestions and love questions as well. Um, so yeah, I'm going to leave this one here. Hope you've liked it. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you in the next one. So, bye.